over there and I thought I read Book of Occasional Services. Um.
Uh, we're glad that all of you are here this morning as we celebrate National Episcopal School Sunday. Um, our service looks a little bit different this morning to those of you who are regularly here, um, and because, you know, Episcopals love nothing more than change. Um, so uh, we're going to make everybody feel a little uncomfortable this morning. Um, no, we're, we're um, using our, for the beginning of our service, we're using the chapel service that the school celebrates every day. Um, and it's just such a joy to, to be with them in chapel every morning. Um, the children will stay in here. They're going to process in with the cross. And they're going to stay in until we sing the B-I-B-L-E song. Um, and then they're going to kind of go back during the readings um, and the sermon. Um, and they'll come back in at the peace. Um, so if you have any kids, they can follow the, the kind of herd out uh, during the readings and the sermon. Um, let's see. I um, I hope it's all right to announce. Um, we'd like to welcome all of our visitors this morning. We're so glad that you're here. Um, and this is such a precious community, the church and the school, and we're glad that we can celebrate with you this morning. So please stand as we sing our opening hymn. someone who said such wonderful things and did such amazing things that people just had to ask him who he was. And he said, I am the light. We remember them in their variety, and their differences, and in what they share. Give us open doors, open minds, and open hearts that we might accept, learn, and love everything and everyone whom you have given us. Help us to share our lives and what we have, and to learn from all those who are in school with us. We pray in the name of Jesus, who opened his arms to all young and old. Amen. Let us say our mission. We are here to love God, love learning, and love our neighbor. Now for the little creed. I believe in God above. I believe in Jesus above. I believe the Spirit too comes to teach me what to do. I believe that I can be true and loving for my
may be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose water never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall rise up the foundations of many generations and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to live in. The word of the Lord. Let us pray Psalm 27 together in unison. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? When evildoers come upon me to eat my flesh, it was they, my foes and my adversaries, who stumbled and fell. Though an army should encamp against me, yet my heart shall not be afraid. And though war should rise up against me, yet I will put my trust in him. One thing I have asked of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the fair beauty of the Lord, and to seek him in his temple. For the day of trouble he shall keep me safe in his shelter. He shall hide me in the secrecy of his dwelling and set me high upon a rock. Even now he lifts up my head above my enemies around about me. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of the light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what people do secretly, but everything exposed by the light becomes vi visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord.
Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Ashley Miles and I have the joy and honor of being the head of school at St. David's. So let's take a quick flashback. 16 years ago, I had a cush part-time job in Northeast ISD, working a couple days a week and then being home with my young children the other two days. Elise, then a now a junior at TMI, was almost two, and she was enrolled in a program that was called Bright Beginnings now known as Pre-K-2, here at the school. Katie was almost nine months old and was on the wait list to join her sister the next fall. So each day in the backpacks, notices would come home, a flyer here and there. Our beloved headmistress, Rena DuBose, has retired and we're looking for the next head of school. I saw the flyers, I read the flyers, and I threw the flyers away, just to be totally honest. But then they kept coming, and I felt a tug here and there. Hmm, what would it be like to work at the same school where my children attended? Hmm. And then I quickly dismissed that. So then some more flyers, some more tugs at my heart, some more messaging. So I did exactly what you're not supposed to do. I said a lot of prayers, and I asked God for a sign. If you want me to do this, God, you're going to have to send me a sign. How audacious. <laughs> but less than a week later, I got a, friend, a phone call from a dear friend, Catherine Harper, who is in administration at, at, in NESC currently. And she told me, Ashley, my father, Frank Schweers, is on the vestry right now. And we really think that you should throw your name in the hat for this head of school position. So I told God, okay, I hear you, I hear you, I did it, and thanks be to God, the rest is history. Now, 14 years, believe it or not, into my time as head of school at St. David's, God has blessed me so much, with so much joy, so many blessings, and such an amazing community in my life. These, this joy, blessings, and community are far beyond anything I could have ever dreamt of or asked for. Joy, so much joy in starting each and every school day in chapel with a group of amazing people. Joy, the sound of 200 little voices singing a favorite chapel song. Joy, 
giggles and laughter as lines of classes walk to and from my, past my office, what I like to call a cuteness parade every single day. Joy, helping someone solve a really difficult problem or walking alongside them in a hard time. Joy, planning a fun event for the entire community. Joy, watching an amazing teacher, dedicated, delight in watching her students tackle a problem, learn something new, receive God's love. Joy, the sweet hugs and the little ones blowing kisses to us throughout the day. So much laughter, joy in that laughter. I remember once a little girl <laughs> came to the office because she had put something up her nose and she couldn't get it out. And so several of us tried to help, her teacher tried to help, we could not figure it out. She of course was getting more and more scared and more and more tearful as that little object remained in her nose. And of course one of our amazing assistant teachers, Miss Carol, figured out a way and out it came and lo and behold, it was her teacher's button from the very shirt she was wearing that day. So lots of laughter, lots of laughter. Another favorite memory was walking through the courtyard and picture all our precious little kids. Some are riding in the little buggies, some are riding tricycles, some are skipping and running along. So I'm walking along looking at this and all of a sudden, this little boy rides past me, zooms past me, grinds to a halt, and says, good morning, Jesus. <laughs> and I go, I turn around and look, he's back. I don't know where he is, but he's back. No, he had seen me leading chapel in the days, and so my new name was Jesus. It was a little intimidating, but you know, got to roll with it. So much joy, so much laughter. And then God has blessed us with so much amazing community. Um, my absolutely outstanding staff, when I was trying to think of how to describe them, I just had a lot of adjectives. Gifted, talented, funny, creative, nurturing, challenging, particular, hardworking, dedicated, fearless, and 100% love of children. Our parents, parents of young children are truly an amazing group of people because you think about their children are their hearts on two little legs running out into the world and they hand those children over to us who are almost near strangers at the beginning of the year and they entrust that precious gift into our care. So it's such a gift to partner with you and you honor us by allowing us to be part of your child's early education and helping you to raise your children. Another amazing community, our school board, our vestry, our church staff, our rector, our parish members. You've invested so much into the school and you see the fruits of your investment. You've invested so much into me, my family, our staff. I've learned and grown so much thanks to you. And then, of course, the stars of the show, our precious students. Such laughter, such joy, such quirks, such funny things, tears, jokes, and then the most important, their pure and unending faith. Such a gift. The blessings that I've experienced as head of school are, and I couldn't count them, but I just thought of a couple. First of all, getting to experience a true church school partnership. This church loves and supports our school through gifts, service, and other ways. Our school loves the church as the entity that start, started it, guides it, watches and experiences great joy as the school thrives and grows, but is always there to shower it in love. Another blessing is to be part of so many amazing people's lives. Students, parents, staff members, neighbors, the community. It is such a blessing. Um, I've learned so much, which is a great blessing. I've learned to grow spiritually, develop as a leader, as an educator, a mother, a wife, and most importantly, a child of God. And then the biggest blessing is just being welcomed into this 
church and school. From day one, I was welcomed as head of school, but also, more importantly, as Ashley, Cotty, Elise, and Katie, individuals part of this community. This community welcomed my parents, and they welcomed my sister and her husband. They were married right here, and my niece and nephew. And for that, I always feel blessed. So, after all these years, if I could go back 16 years to my younger self and give her a couple words of wisdom, I have just three things I'd say. Number one, Ashley, give. Give and give mightily to each and everything that you can. Go ahead, when that church pledge card comes in the mail, don't procrastinate it, pray and sign it and send it in. God is always there. Go on a limb, put a larger amount than you even think you can handle. God always provides and his blessings are more numerous than you can ever imagine. I would say secondly, look for God in every moment because he is always there. Not only in the giggles and the laughters, the fall flings, the rodeo roundups, the spring flings, he's there in the deficit years, the swine flu years, the years when enrollment is high, when it's low, when it's calm, when it's crazy. God was always there walking alongside me and our staff and our school each and every moment. And then lastly, I tell myself, give more love than you ever hope to receive. Each and every person is doing the very best they can at that given moment. So give them that love unconditionally. It's the number one lesson that we teach in chapel every day, that God loves us. He loves us no matter what, no matter where, and no matter why. So let's share that love with each other and all who we encounter. So thank you, St. David's, for 14 years of joy, blessings, and community. Amen. It's a much bigger crowd than eight o'clock. <laughs> um, I am Sandy Gallagher, and I am so happy to be here with you all on Episcopal School Sunday. It's an opportunity to celebrate the blessing that is St. David's Church and school. One of my fondest memories growing up is St. Christopher's by the Sea. It's a small Episcopal camp, uh, no, it's a small Episcopal church in South Texas. It was a place I felt at home, the people of St. Christopher's were vested in me and took care of me and looked out for me. I vividly recall comfortably peeking into rooms looking for someone without hesitation, including the rector's office. I remember playing hide and seek between Sunday school and big church. And today I see so much of that same comfort in my kids. As they walk the halls, or yell running down the halls of St. David's. This place has become to my kids what St. Christopher's was to me, a sanctuary where love and light abound. One of the screaming kids. <laughs> Our St. David's story begins with the school. We moved to San Antonio from Austin in 2017 when our oldest son, Jack, was one and a half. It was a late last minute move and we were scrambling to find a, a school to enroll him. I drove from Austin for back to back to back and back school visits in early June. It was before St. David's had a, a summer program. And Susan Wilcox, Susan, do you remember the first day you met me? Kindly gave me a tour. And despite being an empty school at the time, no students, no teachers, I left San Antonio that day with St. David's as my very first choice. I was drawn to the tucked away neighborhood location and being a sucker for natural light, I loved the atrium and the courtyard classrooms. In that hurried day, it was probably the facilities that drew me to St. David's most of all, but God certainly knew what he was doing by calling us here. Our kids love St. David's. They are fed and nurtured here Monday through Friday and again on Sundays. 
in more ways than my husband John and I could ask, and in certainly all the ways that we pray for. They have the best time every time. They have made dear, dear friends. They have been guided and led by amazing teachers. They have been loved, and they have loved. And incredibly, really, really incredibly, they have worshiped each and every day that they have attended. And thanks to COVID, even from home. <clears throat> St. David's Church reaches young people in so many ways. And as a mother of young kids today, I'm grateful that one of those ways is through our preschool ministry. Personally, one of my favorite things about St. David's is that everyone attends chapel every day. That's not, it's not the common case in preschools. Even the littlest among us, the 16 months old, attend chapel every day. What we just saw, the start of that, that's how they start their Monday through Friday. It's special and it's meaningful and it really, really matters. Ooh. We see the impact in our youngest, Red, who turns two in November, who keeps us honest with our mealtime meal prayer, prayers. If it weren't for his little prayer hands and his joyful grin, as we all sit down, we would definitely forget at least 50% of the time. The impact is evident when Maggie, our middle, regularly declares that God is the boss and everyone is our neighbor, including the man walking there, which she did this week on the swing outside. And Jack, we see the impact as he flourishes at his new school, Howard, which he loves and yet can't get out the door fast enough on Sunday mornings to get back to St. David's. We, as parents, feel the impact when we drop our kids at the doors of this place with joy-filled and peace-filled hearts. And that's just the school. The school doesn't exist without you, the church. After a few months of continuing our church hopping ways, John and I found ourselves returning to St. David's more and more. And St. David's became the first church I joined since I left St. Christopher's when I moved away for school. If you wanna do the math on that, it's 20 plus years of church hopping. <clears throat> A big part of that choice reflected the outreach programs and the strong youth program, both of which are hard to beat. That ministry that begins on the other side of this building, up those stairs and through the doors, continues here in this building. Whether it's cooking hot food distributed under the bridge or filling empty backpacks with school supplies. St. David's is a light in this community. The school is an extension of the church and the church ex extends the school's love, its teaching and reach. St. David's school mission is to love God, love learning and love your neighbor a mission that is also lived out here each Sunday. It's a power punch, church and school. When we gather here on Sundays, I think it's important to remember the life and learning that takes place on the days sandwiched in between. Today's reading from Ephesians says to live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. St. David's School is a beaming light for over 200 kids each day, and St. David's Church is a beaming light for this community. I say it a lot, Jesus' love permeates this place. It's a sanctuary to so many. So, when you see my kids running down the hall or playing Chase and McAllister, know they are home and basking in the love and the light that abound. In peace, let us pray, that, pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. We pay, pray for the Bright Beginnings classes, included Mrs. Cynthia, Ms. Barbara, Mrs. Melanie, Ms. Patricia, Ms. Denaria, Ms. Thelma, Ms. Nickel, and for Ms. Nunez. 
We pray for the pre-K-2 classes, including Ms. Ramirez, Ms. Porter, Ms. Yui, Ms. Aguilar, Ms. Wilcox, Ms. Carmen Hernandez's class, Mrs. Robinson and Mrs. Rosser's class, and Mrs. Cantaliti and Mrs. Berry's class. We pray for the pre-K-3 classes, including Mrs. Boucher, Ms. Wells, Mrs. Graham, Mrs. Wangs, Mrs. Holcomb, Mrs. Mrs. Greenbloom's class, and Mrs. Montecravy's class. Ms. Everett's class, we pray for the pre-K-4 classes, including Mrs. Guerra's class, Mrs. Marcella Hernandez's class, Ms. Nell Hernandez's class, Ms. Pritchard's class, for Ms. Blaylock, for Mrs. Barrera, and Mrs. Stevens. And we pray for Mrs. Woodland's kindergarten class. We pray for our special teachers, Mrs. Quintiero, Ms. Gomez, Mrs. King, Mrs. Mrs. Albert, our permanent substitute teacher. And we pray for our office staff, Mrs. Miles, Mrs. Matt Randolph, Mrs. Gully, Mrs. Babbitt, Mrs. Orman, Ms. Ochis, and Mrs. Caranco. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for Blake, Max and Gray, Andrew, Frank, Brennan, Tim and Peggy, Ruth, Bill, Alice, Colleen, Betty, John, Robert, Edward and Suzanne, Joe and Hayden, Bayless, Dee Dee, Megan, Carmen, Bob, Lee, Charlotte, Forrest, Flynn, the family of Thad Ziegler, the family of Judy Spencer, and all the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer for refugees, for prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. We pray for Judy Spencer, Thad Ziegler, and for all who have died in the communion of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but eternal life. We pray to you, O Lord. O eternal God, bless all schools, colleges, and universities, and especially St. David's School, that they may be lively centers for sound learning, new discovery, the pursuit of wisdom, and grant that those who teach and those who learn may find you to be the source of all truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So first, I'd like to, again, just welcome any visitors we have this morning. It's so great to just have a, a full church this morning. Um, the Something I, I have to continue to remind parishioners occasionally um, is that the school is just a tremendous uh, ministry of our church. Um, it has such a wide and far-reaching impact uh, beyond what many of you know. Um, we did a funeral a few weeks ago, and somebody told me, um, that they were one, one of the first graduating class members. Bill back here, you were also one of the first graduating class members, correct? Um, so uh, there are so many in this community that have been impacted by the ministry here. And it is, uh, to, to see it at first hand is, is fantastic um, that these children are shaped with the formation of love. Um, and so I know that some of you may not have kids, uh, or maybe your kids are grown, uh, but just know that uh, 
uh, the school really does a fantastic job about spreading the love of Jesus Christ. Um, as, as you may or not have read in an email, we uh, have uh, Ashley Miles, our head of school. Uh, this is going to be her last year with us. And, uh, and I have two thoughts when, when she let me know is that number one, it's gonna be uh, really hard to fill her shoes uh, because she's done such a great job here. Uh, but the second thought I have is um, she's made it really easy uh, for us going forward. She has helped to create such a wonderful school environment and foster that. And so I am confident um, that while we have a lot of work ahead of us to find a, a great success for, successor to Ashley, um, we, we have a wonderful school to find that right person, um, including a fantastic staff uh, that has really just made this place wonderful. Um, I invite you to do your announcement insert in your bulletin. Um, we have a few things coming up today. After this service, uh, we're going to be training all of our acolytes and ushers and readers. Um, and if you haven't done that yet, you'd like to be a part of one of those ministries, we encourage you to stick around and, and be trained with the rest. Um, if uh, some of you are joining us online, you can join us today for that training. Rest assured, uh, we'll, we'll do more training in the future uh, if you can't make it today. Next week, um, we are having our Blessing of the animal service outside. Um, we've been accustomed to doing outside services with COVID, uh, so don't forget to bring your chairs uh, or, a, or a blanket. We're going to be out here on the, on the lawn, on the uh, parking lot. We're going to be out here on the lawn and uh, bring your animals. Please bring them on a leash or a cage or something to control them. Um, and so we'll, we'll be doing our full Eucharist service outside with the blessing of the animals if you can join us. Uh, we'll continue to have our 8 o'clock service inside. Please don't bring your animals inside to the 8 o'clock service. Um, and we'll also stream the 8 o'clock service for those of you who can't join us next Sunday. Um, in between the services, from about 9.15 to 10.15, uh, we have, right now we've been having breakfast again, which has been really great. It's just a time for people to have some fellowship, and also we have formation classes uh, for adults and for children during that time, so we hope you all join us in between our services. Um, we do have a lot of visitors today. Um, we're going to continue with our Eucharistic service here in a bit. Um, and all baptized Christian, no matter what tradition you were baptized in, are welcome to come and, and receive communion. Um, you come and to the rail, you can just hold your hands out like this, uh, and I'll place the wafer in your hand. We are doing uh, communion of both kinds right now, so bread and wine, but we're only dipping in the wine, so if you want to uh, take, take the wine as well, um, just hold on to your wafer, and as the chalice comes by, you can dip it in the wine. Um, if you're not comfortable with that yet, that's perfectly fine. You can consume your wafer and then just hold your arms over your chest like this and the child's bearer will know to, to pass you by. And rest assured, you are receiving full communion if you receive just a wafer. Um, at this point, I'd like to invite uh, any uh, school board members we have. pray for these school members and those who are joining us from afar. You've been called to serve on the school board at St. David's. Will you, as long as you are engaged in this work, perform it with diligence? Will you faithfully and reverently execute the duties of your ministry to the honor of God and the benefit of the members of this church and school? There are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit, and there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. There are varieties of working, but it is the same God who inspires them all and everyone. 
Let us pray. Gracious Father, look with favor upon these your servants, whom you have called to minister to the needs of our students, staff, and teachers at St. David's. Confirm with your heavenly benediction your servants, whom we admit today to the ministry of the school board, that with sincere devotion they may offer you a service acceptable to your divine majesty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In the name of this God and in the name of God and this congregation, I commission you as St. David's School Board. I can't tell you all how great this group of people is. Um, I, as you know, the past year and a half has been a very difficult year for all of us, but I've seen firsthand how difficult it has been for these folks. And so first, just give them a hand. For <laughs> walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Please stand. so that in seeking you we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. That we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, Having loved his own for the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, 
which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share in this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ for the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with David and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the living members of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have led us to the Spirit of truth and sacrament of God and love. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Before I give our final blessing, uh, I forgot about birthdays and anniversaries. <laughs> Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries that need prayers today? Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Happy anniversary. Okay. Perfect thing. Okay. Four? Okay. Let's pray for our birthdays. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand, comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful, and raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may your peace which passes understanding by all the days of their lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. It's always bad to forget anniversaries and birthdays. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a sacrifice to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you now and remain with you always. Amen.
Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us bless the Lord.